Mr. Mercer. Question. Dr. Scott, thank you for being here. You're, you're saying that there are non-existent weaknesses of evolution. There are no weaknesses to the theory of evolution. Not in the sense that the term weaknesses is used in this um, rarefied environment. Uh, by weaknesses of evolution, the critics of evolution, the critics of the idea that living things had common ancestors, what you've been referring to as macroevolution, their idea of weaknesses really consists of going through the literature and pulling out, at best, anomalies that might question some detail of evolution, either about the pattern of evolution or the process of evolution, and then claiming that those anomalies, alleged anomalies, somehow question the whole issue of whether living things had common ancestors. This is not how science is done. And this is, the, is not a, this is not a good instructional strategy for students. What is a good definition of evolution then? Evolution, biological evolution, is a three-part idea. The big idea, which is what we're concerned with here, is that living things have common ancestors. They have descended with modification from common ancestors. We also talk about the pattern of evolution, how the tree of life has branched through time. Lots of uh, controversy about that. Our Birds really descended from dinosaurs and so forth. We also talk about the processes of evolution. How important is natural selection versus other issues when it comes to explaining the tree of life, when it comes <coughs> to explaining uh, common ancestry. But you see no weaknesses in the tree of life. You see no weaknesses. Uh, again, we've gone several times that we all understand, believe, and we see every day what the layman's term microevolution. Mm -hmm. But we have proof of, of a one, of a bird, a dino, like the dino bird that was in National Geographic in the year 2000 that was later proven to be a fraud, or the, uh, the uh, uh, Piltdown Man, the missing link that's proven to be a fraud, too, or perhaps the peppered moth theory or whatever. Do we have proof of, of one species going to another? Yes, actually we do. Uh, you're talking about speciation, and we have lots of examples of speciation occurring. Speciation has to do with the change of one species to another. And we have lots of examples of that. We can show it in the laboratory. We can observe it in nature. So we can prove like Dr. Haeckel's drawings that a, that a, a salamander became a fish, became a pig, became a sheep. You, became you're talking about speciation. Um, Haeckel's embryos, this, this is more of this, you know, inside baseball kind of stuff that I hate to take the time from other people to testify. Well, no, I, I Haeckel's would argue embryos, that the but, Sir, I, I do have an answer for you. Thank you. The Haeckel's embryo um, canard about disproving evolution is nonsense. Um, it's presented over and over in creationist literature. Uh, it has, even the person they quote as supposedly uh, revealing the fraud of Haeckel's embryos, uh, Richardson, an English uh, uh, scientist, has said, look, they're really misquoting me, much as Dr. Arbor was misquoted. They're really misquoting me. Here's really the story of, of Haeckel, and his findings are still accurate whether or not he drew some drawings more similar to the other. The basic idea is there. The more recently you share a common ancestor, the more similar your embryos. And that's the take home of that. But you believe you can prove a tree, a tree of life and we all have a common ancestry. Okay. Uh, let's, she's already stated this. 